the Vox Markets podcast with Justin Waite. Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Welcome to the podcast on Tuesday, the 22nd of December, 2020. On the podcast today, Andrew Knott, CEO of Savannah Energy, provides a financial and operational update and also discusses their revised gas sales agreement. Plus... George Franceschides, Executive Chairman of Alba Mineral Resources, talks about their surface drilling and pilot plant installation at Clogai St. David's Gold Mine. And as always, at the end of the podcast, I have two lists for you. The top five most followed companies on Vox Markets in the last 24 hours and the top five most liked RNSs too. By the way, you can see top 10 versions of both these lists at voxmarkets.co.uk. We'll also see our COVID-19 index, and lots of other content in articles, videos, podcasts. Let's have a look at the COVID-19 index. Biggest rise of the day is Inspiration Healthcare, up 5.3% to 80 pence. Biggest faller, React Group, down 7.55% to 1.225. Check that out at voxmarkets.co.uk. Vox Markets is an online community of investors that runs a free mobile and desktop platform that allows you to track news and updates about any UK-listed company. Offering RNS push notifications, detailed charts, pricing data, and much more. Find out more at voxmarkets.co.uk forward slash app. And joining me on the podcast right now is Andrew Knott, CEO of Savannah Energy, S-A-V-E, a sticker there. Andrew, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much, Justin, for having me. Merry yeah. Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too. And, uh, you know, you've just provided a, a financial and operational update, and we'll uh, get into that in a bit. Uh, but as always, Andrew, if someone's listening here, and uh, maybe they've never heard of um, Savannah or they're vaguely familiar, can you just summarise the company, please, its operations? Yeah, Savannah Energy is an M- I, uh, a UK uh, a UK company which is listed on the on the AIM market. We're focused around two high quality energy projects: one in the Republic of Niger, one in Nigeria. Uh, in Nigeria, which is really the focus of today's announcement, uh, we have a business which supplies the gas, which powers over ten percent of the country's power infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So it's a really, really important role for the country. And then in Niger, we're involved in an oil project, uh, which in aggregate is expected to very much significantly increase uh, uh, the country's GDP over the course of the coming years. So again, it's a very important project for that country. Yeah. Um, the, 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 we'll talk about the cash generation properties, the robustness, the resilience of the business model. Um, I guess as we go through the financial and the, the financial highlights that we're announcing today, but the other key thing to get to put in place up front is there's a lot of growth potential in both businesses, and the management team is very, very focused on delivering that. Excellent stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's start off with then the financial highlights, and you take us through a few of those if you could. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So I think most importantly, what we've done this morning, we're reiterating our revenues guidance. We've announced a very significant reduction in cost in cost guidance by 25 million. Uh, by $25 million. So our total revenue guidance remains uh, more than $200 million. Our cost guidance has been reduced by $25 million. Uh, we're stating very clearly that we expect to have record cash collections in Nigeria for the assets, and we're stating very clearly that we expect to have record production volumes in 2020. Um, separately, we've announced uh, a new contract, a, 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 a very positive uh, change in our, on one of our contracts, which we'll announce, uh, which, which I'll discuss in a second. Mm-hmm. But really, at, at the group level, so year to date, net debt has been reduced by about $65 million, so from 484 to just uh, $419 million at the end of November. Cash collections are $164 million. Um, which is a very significant increase in the year-on-year period. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about the total revenue number, more than $200 million. Uh, our depreciation, depletion and amortisation guidance, that remains unchanged. Uh, but that very significant reduction in our operating cost guidance to uh, to 43 to 47, uh, from 68 to 72, um, which is a $25 million cut in aggregate. Um, we're reducing our capital expenditure guidance as well as we defer um, and, 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 and deliver cost reductions in, 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 in our planned uh, capex. Um, and that's really the sort of the core focus around the financial um, around the financial highlights. So I think what you're seeing from us is 
We acquired this business last November. We'd already delivered in the interim period, the gap period between announcing the deal and delivering it quite significant efficiencies mm. um, and, and rationalizations. But you're seeing us continue to uh, continue to deliver uh, uh, those efficiencies and those savings in the business, which is obviously to everybody's benefit. And really, the, the message is we're doing what we said on the tent in terms of delivering the, the debt pay down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's a very encouraging and positive update in terms of the financial performance this morning. Yeah. In terms of the um, in terms of the announcement, the other exciting thing is that what we've done is uh, one of our main customers is a cement factory owned by Lafarge Africa. Yeah. Um, we've renegotiated that contract such that we've extended it by five years for the next uh, for the next five years, the effective gas price um, has increased by 50% uh, from $5 in MCF to $7.50. In return for that, we've agreed to, to, to sell them less gas, uh, which will enable them to utilize what's called their makeup gas balance, which is gas they previously paid for, but they've not taken, they've not taken delivery of. In aggregate, the, 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 the deal is enhancing to a short and medium term cash flows and overall alternate asset value. But as importantly, by by effectively selling less gas for a higher price, mm -hmm. um, we end up in a situation where that frees up a significant amount of gas, which we can then sell to other customers. And that's obviously our core focus on the business is to continue to add new customers. Mm -hmm. So it's a positive piece of business for us and for the far to um, it's because it enables them to use the the, 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 the makeup gas and we're very, very happy to have such a constructive relationship with a key customer such as them. Mm. Um, and that's really the core things we're talking about this morning. We also talk about the expectation of signing um, or, or, or of getting a new gas sales agreement on our shortly, um, which, um, which I remain uh, hopeful of. Um, but really what I would say, the, the, the message to, to our investors and our stakeholders is we're doing what we said we'd done the time when we did the deal originally. Um, so yeah. as a company, we're very happy. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, and if you could, uh, and uh, just any any more uh, operational highlights you'd like to talk about, talk through if you could? Uh, no, I mean, that, 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 I mean, that's really the, the that's really the, 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 the core aspects. The, the core aspects are, just to be clear, revenue guidance reiterated, Further cost for further reductions in, in, in the cost base announced. Um, record cash collections, record production, and then in terms of the the, the, the Lafarge GSA, we're extending it out by five years. We're increasing the price in the medium term years, and we're freeing up additional gas to enable us to sell to other customers. Yeah, yeah. So that's really the key key things that we're talking about this morning. And so looking forward, I suppose. Uh, in fact, let's, let's let's wrap it into three reasons. Then, if you could, uh, I mean, you must be quite positive. So, uh, in looking forward, if 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 uh, someone listening right now likes the sound of this progress in making there, but are not yet following the story, give them those three quick reasons, Andrew, why they should hit that follow button on your page on Fox and add Savannah Energy to their watch list, please. Well, I think the first thing is that we we. we for our name company, we have two very, very robust, unique, strategically important businesses with that, 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 that are clearly high quality assets. So I think that's the quality of the asset base. I think is very important. I would say the second thing that's very important is that we um, both of our core businesses have significant growth potential. So Nigeria is through the addition of new customers through in, in Niger is through, through delivering first oil on that project and also discovering more oil over time. And then I guess that the the, 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 the third the, the third issue is we take it as a given internally, but sometimes I think it's important just to reiterate is that the social good that we do as a business, the contribution we make to our host communities and stakeholders, I think is incomparable versus ninety nine percent of other listed businesses. Mm -hmm. We're supplying over ten percent of a country's power and we're participating in a project which is going to completely transform, completely transform. Uh, another con another country's GDP, um, which I think puts us in a very very unique position as a business. So, quality of the quality of the assets, the inherent growth within them, and the the, the the social contribution that we're making, I guess, would be three very key reasons to start to pay attention to our company. Excellent stuff, Andrew. Good to chat to you, and uh, thanks for coming on. And have a happy Christmas, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up in the new year. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye bye.
The Vox Markets Podcast with Justin Waite. And joining me on the podcast right now is George Franceschetti's Alba Mineral Resources Executive Chairman, of course, ALBA's ticket there. George, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Justin. Good morning. Yeah, even though the last couple of days of uh, you know, trading for Christmas, you've got some news out there on uh, both bits of uh, different parts of the portfolio, and we'll dig into that in a bit. Uh, but as always, just give us a brief summary, because uh, there's always people tuning in brand new, and uh, I'm sure you'd like to hear an overview of the company, if you could, George. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're um, a mining company. We're a mining and development We've got projects in the UK, uh, particularly in Wales, um, in Ireland and in Greenland. We've also got a couple of oil and gas investments, but mining is the focus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, let's let's get into that, uh, that mining bit then, first of all. Uh, surface drilling update and pilot plant installation. Clogger in St. David's Gold Mine. Of course, gold is a good place to be at the moment. There's, there's more money coming from the Fed, which is only going to help sort of, uh, you know, sort of assets like gold. Uh, but take us through what's happened here, if you could, George. Yeah, sure. Well, we're, we're trucking along. We've actually sort of down tools now in Clog Eye, but only just actually. So um, our program really went from end of July when we uh, were able to get back into the field post a bit of easing of COVID restrictions at that time to, yeah, middle of December, really. So we've been really sort of active in, in, uh, in Clog Eye in North Wales there. So the news we put out yesterday was uh, twofold. One is an update on our surface drilling. So We've been drilling um, some targets below the known, the deepest known work veins at the Lech Frith level, about 30 metres below that, where there's never been any mining before. And we've completed three holes, Justin, for about 400 metres, and each of those holes has intersected significant quartz veining. Now, that is um, what we're looking for. That's the structure we're looking for, because that's the structure where all the historical gold has been produced from at Clog Eye. So... What's interesting about hitting the, the quartz veining in, in all three of those holes is that they were all intersected around the 83 to 96 metre mark. So what we're starting to delineate there is a zone, essentially a vein system um, a, and a new vein system, new at least to us, uh, because it's never been tapped before. So I think that's very potentially very significant. And it's mm-hmm. exactly what we're trying to do with this drilling, Justin, is mm-hmm. to is to try to hone in on some of these targets and and refine them and get closer and closer to the what we believe to be the pay zones, the areas where there is gold uh, still to be exploited at decent grades. So I think that's a really, really positive result so far in the surface drilling. Yeah, absolutely. And so, like I say, down tools now for Christmas. Uh, so what's next in, in, in the new year? Yeah, well, um, yeah, so the other bit that, um, that that we announced the other day or yesterday was the pilot plant installation. So we've had our last two important bits of kit delivered from South Africa, a bit slow because of COVID getting, getting stuff into the UK is interesting at the moment, but we managed to get it through customs, get it up to Dolgethlai and get it installed. So we've now got that impact crusher and gold concentrator on site and we've uh, released some pictures about that on uh, on our RNS and on Twitter. And um, with the plant that we already had there in, in the mine buildings at Clogo, we're now pretty much set to start processing that bulk sample in our own bespoke pilot processing plant. And, and, and we'll do that in January as soon as we can get the electrical circuit installed uh, or, or rigged up and um, do some final safety tests. Then we'll be straight into processing that bulk sample now. That's um, a, a real benefit for the project to have our own pilot plant on site in our backyard. We can put that material through it um, efficiently and cost effectively. And then, of course, any further material that we produce, extract from the mine, we can then push it through our pilot plant in exactly the same way. It'll help us as we refine where we're going to go and mine, uh, where we're going to go find gold. Of course, if we put through I don't know, three five, three to five tons of material from a certain zone and we get good grades, we know that we should go back into that zone and extract more material. And, and conversely, if we don't get good grades from a particular zone when we, when we process it, we know that that's not going to be an immediate priority for further follow-up bulk sampling. So having our own pilot plant is a real, real plus um, and very important for the future of the project and getting it into production proper commercial production as soon as possible. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite exciting for 2021. And, and also, I know it's not a core focus of yours, uh, but there's been a horse hill update, but it's positive, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. I think there was a, a challenge that obviously a, appears to have had spurious legal grounds and uh, it's now been uh, disposed of by the court, uh, a challenge to the validity of the um, planning consents given by Surrey County Council in, re- in relation to the long term production of oil from Horse Hill. So so I think that hopefully draws a, a line under that particular episode and uh, and the Horse Hill project can continue on to, you know, as it is to full full long-term commercial production yeah yeah excellent stuff okay george well uh, as always then if someone's liking the sound of uh, what's happening here but they sit on the sidelines and uh, they're thinking oh, okay very interesting uh, and uh, they're thinking of hitting that follow button just give them three reasons why they should hit that follow button and add alba mineral resources to their watch list please right well three reasons i'd point out two of them we haven't even touched on because it's been so quiet in Greenland this year with the COVID lockdown. We really hope that's going to change uh, into 2021 because we've got big plans for Amit Sokar, exceptionally high grade graphite project mm-hmm. for Tule Black Sands where we've got a big resource of 1.9 million tonnes of contained ilmenite up in northern Greenland and where we want to drill some more and get some more tonnes into that project and move it into development and of course Clog Eye where we, um, we've we touched upon some of our plans but we're working on multiple fronts at Clog Eye to get that project back into commercial production as soon as we possibly can. Excellent stuff, George. Good to chat to you. Have a nice Christmas and hopefully we'll catch up in the new year. Thanks very much. Thanks, Justin. Merry Christmas to everybody and a happy new year. OK, it's time for top five most followed companies on Vox Markets in the last 24 hours. They are at five. Powerhouse Energy, big rise today. Up 36% to 6.6 pence. I did cover those a while back. I sold them way too early and they went ballistic. Uh, that's a lesson learned. If you're in a strong theme, which is alternative energy and uh, you believe in it, uh, don't get impatient. And that's one of the things I did, was get impatient and sold out, and it went nuts. Um, at four, supply at me capital, at 14% of 0.535. At three, remote monitored systems, uh, up 0.77% to 1.3. At two, Tirupati graphite, graphite, sorry, not graphite, um, <laughs> They are on 5.4% to 70 pence. And at one, Trackwise Designs. I covered them on the weekend as my first electric vehicle play. Um, of course, a huge revolution in electric vehicles. And their company will benefit from that. Already got a big contract with uh, one of the EV OEMs. Uh, so they're up 2.46% to 2.50. Uh, okay, top five most liked RNSs are as follows. Add five, supply at me capital, captive bank update, uh, quadrivio group named. At four, new Formix half year report. At three, Sonic Palash funds from first drawdown received. At two, open orphan contract renewal with top three pharmaceutical clients. And at one, gene drive response to new COVID strain. Uh, that's like the most read RNSs are as follows. Supply at me capital. The number one for Sarin's two, you get on a gas three open orphans there and Simic Atlantic Energy entry into fuel joint venture agreement. Uh, so check that out at voxmarkets.co.uk. Thanks for listening. Much as appreciated. The Vox Markets Podcast with Justin Waite. Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research.